Greetings beautiful people, my name is Simon Javan Okelo and I am here at Kezira Cafe on Rainier Avenue in Seattle, Washington and uh, we are on One Vibe TV on YouTube and I'm here with an incredible, incredible, you know, magnet. You know, Imani is an institution by herself, the work she has done, you know, for, for, for the Seattle community, for the world. Uh, is just remarkable. She's a mother, a business owner, and uh, as I was saying, someone who brings people together. Share with us just a little more about yourself. Sure, and thank you for the kind introduction. Um, to add to the sweetness, I would say I'm a creator first. So I really, I, I do a lot of things. I'm an event planner. I'm an author of children's stories. Um, I'm a healer. So with all that being said, I say that I'm really no different from you. You know, um, we all have our unique element that we bring to our community. And it's important that we find that who we are to bring that to our community because it's almost as if it's one big puzzle and you're a piece and I'm a piece. And I've been in Seattle for 10 years now. I'm not originally from Seattle. I'm from Cincinnati, Ohio, which is Midwest. And it's definitely a bigger community there of African-American, diaspora there, but it's separated. So when I came to Seattle and I seen the group of people in the community that actually had the power to come together, the, the right people at the right time and build with each other, that's how I met Latio. So I've been here 10 years. I've had a restaurant here. I've had a retail shop. I became an author right here, all in Seattle. And what that tells other people and what that shows me is that once you're in a space where you're not oppressed, you can create. Okay, we all are creators. I take pride in everything that I create. I love creating space for community. Um, my biggest thing is wellness, making sure my people are well, mental health, you know, food, health. Um, actually, I was 340 pounds. I do have 12 kids, seven sons and five daughters. Um, the, my oldest child is 30, my youngest child is three. Okay, so entrepreneur had to be a thing for me, okay? Um, just to run their ages down, um, 30, 23, 21, 19, 15, 13, 11, 10, 8, 6, 5, and 2, I uh, 3. So, you know, I never forget a birthday, I never forget an age you know, it's all program. But however, community is a big thing to me. And I can't say it, you know, um, I can't say it enough. It's community is what you make it, okay? And a lot of times when there's no unity, there's no community, like we're communing right now. This is communion what we're doing. And I know we had some difficult conversations earlier, and those are conversations that we should have. It's a challenge for us to have them, but it, it's the part of the healing process. Like it's always been said that African Americans and Africans, they have, they, they have their differences. How when we are the same people, if you don't open your mouth and I hear your language, you look like my brother, you look like my sister. You know, you look like my brother. So I think we have to really get past those things and actually say, how can I add on to something that I can help build, you know, and remove everything else 
bring your own powers to the table, and let's make this thing work, because it's about wellness. And a lot of things fall up under wellness. You know, food, community, health, wealth, even with the gentrification, um, my, I was disappointed to, for my business to be sold on 23rd and spring, you know, even though I wasn't born here in Seattle, I know how much that space means to everyone here, especially of African descent, you know, and the gentrification process, it's trauma in itself, you know, it's trauma in itself. And if I didn't have um, young business students helping me with certain things like technology, you know, marketing and things like that, it, it's a bit of a challenge. So I think working with Edembo and Latio gave me a different perspective of people from Africa. You know, we all are the same and some of us are different, you know, and I appreciate, I'm grateful for sharing the space with everyone. Um, I send love, strength to get through a lot of things. And it's also, remember it's about wellness. What makes you well? Let's talk about, let's talk, let's talk about food, you know, okay. nutrition mm -hmm. in regards to wellness. Okay. So my journey started in 1998, I became vegetarian, but at 19 years old, I had high blood pressure, um, almost diabetes, gallstones. I was 340 pounds, I only had one child. And in that process, I, I, I was given a book and that book was called How to Eat to Live by Elijah Muhammad. That changed my life you know and as I dove into that book other books start coming heal thyself from Queen Afua and different books start coming to me and I really start getting into it and reflecting on who I really was like all the weight was stress it was a stressful childhood you know it was dealing with different things so food is definitely important because you already have these elements and disease that's sitting and settling and then you say hey i can i can help myself by healing myself with this food however the thing is is a lot of times people don't know what to eat and what to not eat right. and all these categories of food you know you got keto you got alkaline you got i say stick with what was from the beginning, your food that resonates with your DNA, the food from Africa. You know, a lot of Africans come to America and they say, oh, the chicken tastes different. The rice tastes different. Everything tastes different because it is different. You know, so I, I, I would just say, do your best. Stick to what you know. And then if what you know is not working for your health, which most situation, is not gonna work for us. All the meat eating and uh, colon clogging and all of that stuff, we, we have to be more mindful if we want to live to see grandchildren, you know? So food is really, this food brought us together. We're all feeling good. We're vibrating high, correct? Mm -hmm. You know, so it's, when they call it comfort food, let's say comfort community food because when community come together in comfort that's food for your whole entire system it's not just about the physical food but we are actually getting fed the love mm -hmm. from the food mm -hmm. and around the food so it's important that's true <laughs> i can talk to you for days and days and days uh you know i come from my father is a healer. My father is a healer, is a, an elder in the church. Mm -hmm. People travel for days to go and spend, you know, weeks with him. Mm -hmm. And I've heard about you 
and we've interacted you know previ previous to today's mm -hmm. conversation and um, these days YouTube is something that other healers also watch and so I just wanted you to share a bit of what you do in regards to healing work okay. and if there are other healers in Africa who are watching what would you tell them <laughs> We need more healers in America. <laughs> That's coming with the real deal. Um, no, actually, um, the, I, I have so many forms of healing work. I'm a doula. Of course, I have 12 children, so um, it's natural for me to help women and men with their birthing process. Um, I do ancestral healing circles. So ancestral healing circles is where we actually look back on our past to reflect on what is going on with us now and how to dig deep down in the root of things. And my business was called Rooted because we're all rooted on this soil. So um, we, we have a Wise Woman Wednesday that we, was, we were doing once a month, then it ended up being once every other week and you know so far then that became the men would stand around and wait on their women to come out of the wise woman wednesday and they would be talking outside so i said why don't we do melanated men mondays too so we started doing a melanated men mondays we do paint art therapy it's story time with imani with the children so it's just different yeah different levels yeah. of healing, yeah. you know? And first of all, it starts, any healer have to heal their self. Right. And the healing never ends. Right. I'm not totally healed, you're not totally healed. It's always, it's we always have to work out the trauma, right. but we have to do it together. We have to support each other, right. you know? Right. So that's why we're here on earth. We're, it's not one person here on earth, so. I just thank you for having me and every time we're in each other's presence, it's only been a couple, but the energy is always great, thank you know, so thank you. Yeah, this was beautiful. A big applause for the, you know, amazing, amazing one. Yeah, is there anything you want to add or? I would like to say that if you ever visit Seattle, well, first of all, follow us on Instagram, Rooted23rd. Rooted, R-O-O-T-E-D, 23rd. And if you ever in Seattle and you want to connect, please feel free to hit us up. Everybody's family. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Stay here, right here with okay. me for, for a moment. <laughs> Stay right here with me. Hey, uh, if you're watching uh, this on YouTube, thank you for tuning in to One by TV. <laughs> Remember to subscribe to the channel. And uh, thank you again for, for being here with us. Peace and love.